maybe. Welcome to LA. How is the weather? It is perfect. Okay, so here's what we are here to do. I made a bunch of videos where I talked about going out and having uh, FaceTime for clients. Uh, I also made a lot of videos where we talked about different vloggers in the space on YouTube, guys that I like to watch. And I've told my viewers before that honestly, I don't watch a whole lot of guys out there. Other Basically. Time do, yeah, well, yeah, it takes me a lot of time to do this, and then there's this, and mm -hmm. the three offsprings that we have. It just so happens that this time, uh, it's gonna be like a combination of both, because we're going to see a famous individual. Yes, our son was very upset about not being here with us. Yeah, well, in my eyes, he's not famous because he's now big on YouTube. In my eyes, he's famous because of the life this guy has lived. And the guy's name is Michael Blakely. Okay, so you ever see that uh, commercial for the beer? The most interesting man in the world? The one that ran a marathon mm -hmm. just because it was on the way? Right. Okay, so, <laughs> so this producer, Michael, guy is kind of like that. I can't uh, wait to meet him. So obviously he's a producer, Michael, because he's a music producer. Mm -hmm. Guy has worked with numerous stars, over 100 million records produced. Tupac, Madonna, Gloria Gaynor, just to mention a few big names, right? Speaks three different languages, so English. I'm, I'm talking about proper English. Can't uh, wait. Uh, Love that. And German and Spanish. I don't know if he speaks American English. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to ask him. That's not a language, babe. Yeah, well, it kind of is. Mm. It's a music producer for TV shows. Get this, Beverly Hills, 90210. Mm -hmm. The old one, not the new one. Yeah, the old one was so much better. Home Improvement. <laughs> that's that's yeah, your, yeah. your kind of show. How about uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Love, love that. That was Weeds. You watched that, right? A long time that, ago. Yeah. He's licensed to drive race cars. Mm -hmm. He's licensed to race offshore boats. Uh, he is licensed to fly a few different type of aircrafts, and he does. Does he, he drive tanks? No, I drove a tank. I, I'm going to ask him that. He <laughs> was uh, honored at the White House by President Bush, alongside with Arnold, named top 10 drummers in the world by Drummer Magazine. The Dos Equis commercial guy, mm -hmm. he ain't got <laughs> on producer Michael. <laughs> I've always thought I was one of the most interesting men in the world because I've, yeah. I've done some things in my life, but mm -hmm. uh, this guy can certainly write more than a book about it, if you ask me. So now we're going to West Hollywood, where his office is. I'm going to talk watches with this guy. Does he have a collection? Oh yeah. Do you know what yeah. he bought from us? Yes. What did he buy? He bought a, uh, an Audemars Piguet offshore turbine, rose gold. Favorite, favorite. Watch in the world, Audemars Piguet. He's not. That's not his favorite. He likes Jacob and Co. And he likes uh, Patty. So you... uh, babe, I, I forgot to tell you, I brought Ian and Amber with us. <laughs> I like his camera a lot better. <laughs> Yeah, how the hell are you? I'm sorry, this camera is much better. <laughs> Looking camera, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, this is like Inception. <laughs> Amber, this is like Inception. <laughs> What's up, guys? So, uh, Michael's uh, own video though. Make you nervous? No, no, no. I got, I yeah, got, he, I got my own video. He, 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 spoke to him, he spoke to him last night, so. Seems like a cool guy, right? <laughs> yeah. Michael? Michael. Hello. How are you? Great. Nice to meet you. Nice finally, to finally right? meet you in person, right? How are you? Adam, how are you? Doing? How are you? Nice, nice to meet you as well. Good to see you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Hi, Hi I'm Michael. Anna. What was your name again? Anna. Anna. And who are these people? Uh, it's a fun. Hi, Hi Adam. Nice to meet you. That's the biggest camera I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. That's, you my, that's my Adam. Hey, what's up? Adam. Adam. Ian. Nice to meet you. You're Ian? Yes. Please change your name to Adam. <laughs> yeah, from now on you're, you're going to be out. Thanks. Do you, do you need one of these? <laughs> I mean, it makes my little setup look pretty uh, insignificant. Yeah, really does, yeah. You won't need to work out. <laughs> I know, right? Heavy enough. <laughs> wow, that's, that's impressive. And I see you're wearing a microphone. Uh, yeah. You yeah. don't do this to me. You just, you just point that Is this what you want? Is it, would you rather have a full production team? It does get um, it does get annoying. It's, it does get annoying. Uh, well, you won't get dizzy from watching it. Like, so, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad. It's so nice to meet you. So yeah. It's so nice to meet you. So you're in town for how long? Uh, the weekend. I'm Do, uh, meeting with a couple of clients, yourself included, and. Uh, Doing a couple of video productions while I'm out here and doing a little bit of business with an auction house, actually. Nice, nice. Yeah, so. And I'm assuming you have a bag full of watches? A few. I, have a few. I can't wait to see them. I have a few. I'm nervous with all these cameras. <laughs> Shh. 
So, well, it's, it's great to meet you, and, and I want to know what you've got in the bag. Okay, so, so before I show you this, I have two questions for you. Okay. Now, do I have to answer these questions? No. Okay. It, well, you do, actually. Yeah, you do. You, yeah. do. you owe me that much. I, I mean, I, I did fly six hours to get here. So, Especially to see me? Well, you are the main attraction. I must for say, real? you are the main. I t I t I, I, let me tell you something. If my my sixteen year old wanted to skip school to come here, I told well, she told him absolutely not. But uh, when he found out that I'm going to see producer Michael, he went ape shit. He what's his name? Marcus. Marcus, hi. <laughs> see, Sorry, not here. I would spank him around a little bit. No, 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 no. School is more important. That's it's right. Um, <laughs> so on the way here, I was talking to my wife Anna, and I said. Uh, you know, this guy is like the Dos Equis commercial, right? The most interesting man in the world. She's like, what do you mean? So I started reading off all your comments, the TV show, and I'm not gonna go through the list. Let's just say yeah, please, I'll, I'll 90210 right. and Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I have to say, because I love Will Smith. He's from Philly. He's my, you know, he's my guy. Uh, not to mention all the music you produce or who you work with from Tupac to Madonna, et cetera, et cetera. But guys, He's Googleable. Is that even a term? I just need to sit back and chill while you yeah. continue. Is, is, that, is that even a term? So, for all you guys that uh, you know want to know, just Google, just Google him. Okay, and he's Googleable. That's it. I'm getting there. You know, since I got a YouTube channel, if you Google my name, my YouTube channel. You will be after this yeah, video. Yeah, no, I might be after this video, but but and I, I was going through all this, and the one question that came up was, why YouTube? You know, after everything you've done. And not to mention the race cars, race boats, flying airplanes, and all those other wonderful things. Please like, don't mention flying airplanes. I still get PTSD after <laughs> going in an airplane with him. Really? That is so that is so wrong on every level. You're here to talk about it, right? So just, took it. He just turned right. Hold on, look at it. Seriously, he really broke a sweat. I, I swear to God, I get PTSD thinking <laughs> about it. Was it a little shaky? Oh. No, it was not shaky at all. It was right. I'll tell you after. Hold okay, on, so, 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 hold so, on. Don't get what are you talking about? Why are you saying this? Pardon? You're alive. I, right? I am. So, I am, absolutely. He's got sweat on his forehead yeah. right now. Seriously. Shaking. I am the safest pilot ever. I go by the book, no heroics. We only span twice. No, we didn't span at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry, carry on. Yes, sorry. Carry on. Really so, my question, so, so my question was, after giving Adam PTSD and flying airplanes and driving race cars and race boats, why YouTube? Why YouTube? As in, why do I do YouTube? Yeah. It's his fault. This guy right here, uh, he suggested we should do a YouTube channel. And I said, why would we do it? What would it be about? And he said, well, you have lots of fun things and you live a kind of interesting life that most people don't. And he thought that people would want to see it. And I fought him on that for what, a month or two? We were up in Monterey, I guess it was two years ago, at the car week. And he said, I'm bringing my camera and uh, let's shoot a YouTube episode, whatever. Didn't know what to do. We shot it, and we were hoping to get, what, a thousand views or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. And it did a lot. Um, and then we shot another one, and it did a lot, and people started to make comments that they were really enjoying it and do more and do this, so we started doing it, and the rest is kind of history. Um, why do we do it? I do it to motivate people, because I'm a great believer, uh, it's not easy, nothing's easy in life, but. I'm a great believer that anybody can have a level of success if they want it badly enough. Some people have it easier than others. You do need a little bit of luck, but hard work, effort, determination, um, drive. You can achieve something if you set yourself you know, targets, goals, with a timeline. And, and if you do that and you achieve it, you set another one. You just keep building. And everybody has a different level. Success is whatever you deem it to be. So I thought, yeah, it'll help if I can do that for people. That's, that's there's a there's a, a a very interesting guy that once said, uh, if you want to get somewhere in life, uh, dream big and set small goals to get there. Do you know who said that? Absolutely. Yeah. I did. But uh, <laughs> I, I was going to say I was going to say me. <laughs> no, but, um, it's funny you said because that's exactly what I talk about within my own company. I tell it to my employees. You said timeline, and that's the key factor there. It's a goal without a timeline is a dream. Who said that? Me. <laughs> and, and let me tell you why. Because if you set a goal and you don't set a time as to when you're going to achieve that goal, you're still going for it. If you give yourself three months, six months, a year, whatever it might be, and you haven't achieved it, you failed. If you did achieve it, fantastic. Big feather in the cap, set another goal. On to the next so step. So without a timeline, you never have a goal to achieve. You're just a dreamer. It's just a dreamer. So always put that as a timeline. 
to a goal. Yeah, you have to. If it, it's you can't you can't also set goals results of which you cannot measure, yeah, which sure. is another thing I always tell my employees within the company because, uh, you know. Myself, having come from nothing, being raised in a 400 square foot apartment in Brooklyn, New York, and always dreaming big, at the age of 13, I knew I was going to be somebody. I was going to achieve something. Maybe I didn't know what it was at the age of 13. I mean, I was in the military, then I was in banking, I was all over the place, and I really found my calling in watches. And which brings me to my next question: uh, the video you did, where it was a Q&A with Adam, that you guys were walking up, up and down Rodeo Drive, and uh, one of the questions I don't remember who the YouTuber was. He said that if you had to pick a million dollar car versus a million dollar watch. You quickly said million dollar watch. You didn't really uh, go into details as to why, and I really wanted to know why you would pick a watch over a car. That's a great question. Um, there's a thousand reasons, of which I'll give you probably two or three. Uh, biggest reason is a watch goes with you wherever you go, right? Second reason is nobody knows what it costs. Some do, but the majority of people have no idea what it costs. You know. You have a million followers on YouTube. A lot of people know now. <laughs> yeah, but there's 340 million sure. people in the US and 3 point something or 7 point so How many people in the world? 7.6 billion now. Yeah, 7.6 billion, of which probably 98% don't know. And I don't, I don't wear watches because of the status. I wear them because I enjoy them. And it reminds me every day when I look at my wrist that, hey, I did something to get this, right? I worked hard for it. Um, you can't take a car into a restaurant with you. You can't go to the restroom and take your car. Not that anybody would really want to. I don't know why I use that. Like <laughs> what, why is it important to you that you can take a watch into a restroom, though? Because it becomes part of you, right? Okay. It becomes part of you. Your car is just a Who you showing off to in the restroom? Metal. That's a whole different topic. Yeah. 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 So, no, but, but my point being is, um, it's a small item that you can reward yourself with. If you reward yourself with a car every time you achieve something, uh, you're going to need a lot of space, right? You're also going to need a lot of maintenance. These don't require maintenance, which is another reason. Uh, there's very few cars that go up in value, although obviously some do, but for the most part they don't. But watches, there are many that go up in value. So to me, I'm not spending money. I'm parking it in something that I enjoy, and I get to play with it whenever I want to play with it. Whereas a car, they go down in value. You know, you're worried about a, a truck hitting you when it's backing into a parking lot. Not too many trucks back into watches, right? So I can't say I've heard of an incident like that. Yeah, right. I have. I had a customer fall off a motorcycle once and slid roughly a hundred feet on his offshore, which saved his arm literally. Wow! He lost two fingers in an accident, and the doctor said if it wasn't for the watch, he would lose the entire hand. Oh, I think that really hot, right? Yeah. You fixed the watch? I fixed the watch. I made it as new. He thought I bought him a brand new watch after the fact. My watchmaker did wonders. He AP should have bought him a watch. AP should have used that as an advert, right? I didn't even think of that. This yeah. watch saved this man's arm. Like the, the beer guy, just now. Uh, the guy that caught the baseball with his chest. Uh, Budweiser just gave him the whole, uh, like a million dollar contract. You see this, during the World Series, guy's holding two beers, and a fly ball comes as a home run. And uh, rather hold than- Hold on, hold on. What's the World Series? The what, baseball. Baseball. It's this little game we play in America, stick. That's the one with the stick. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, it's like, it's like, like croquet, but, but not, okay. So he just got a huge contract from Budweiser. Who was rich? Some guy, some random guy standing in the stands. Home run comes coming in. He's holding two beers in his hand. So when a home run ball flies, everybody and their mother wants to catch it, especially in the World Series. This guy doesn't flinch, doesn't put his beers down, puts his chest out. The ball hits him in the chest, and he holds on to the beers, puts the beer down, and grabs the ball. <laughs> After that, Budweiser, I don't know how many millions of dollars Budweiser gave him. There's like a whole T-shirt line now, you know, save the beer. And so, I mean, I would have dropped the beer. I would have caught the ball, but anyway. You were saying, sorry. <laughs> What's a home run? <laughs> oh, the ball goes over lady. the wall. What wall? Uh, the, the baseball park wall. Okay. How long have you lived here? I am so lost. You have no <laughs> idea. And we can talk soccer. I like soccer. So. I, I have a cricket ball somewhere. I don't know where it is, but I do have a cricket ball here. Okay. Do you have the Sitchin Tendul card, limited edition AP offshore? Do I have a what? Sitchin Tendul card? You know, Michael Jordan of cricket. Michael. No. No? Okay. No. Never mind. So, I mean, you answered my question. I, yes. I, I mean, and I think it's a great answer. I love, I love the fact of how you feel about watches. And you didn't give I'm an answer. I'm passionate about them. Yes. I like cars, but I don't love cars. Would you go along with that? Yeah, oh, I mean, 100%. I, mean, I don't even know what the switches in the cars do. I really don't. And there's been episodes where we've done a review of one of my cars, and I don't know how anything works. 
And people laugh at me, they say, oh, I rent my cars because I don't know where the buttons are. I don't care what the buttons do. As long as the steering wheel works and it turns me around the corner and the brake works. Have you been in a Tesla? You need a computer science degree to, to work that car. I actually have test driven a, a Tesla. Which one? It was the one. Model X. Thank you. It had the doors that went. The, had the Falcon wing. Did, did, did it make it with a car dance for you? When they turn the music on, they do like a whole promo. Can I show you that? That is the coolest. Thing. Am I being right now? No, 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 no. no, no. This, this car literally dances. They turn on the. It, it does. It's uh, the famous mm-hmm. tune. I don't know what it is. What is it? Even? Uh, they do. Uh, there's a couple. It's a Christmas thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I forget the song. And the car literally dances. The doors go to the music. Really? The lights go. Yeah. Oh, that's it's, fun. The, it's the coolest thing. But I didn't like the car because you couldn't hear it. Right. I like Scare, the it scared. It scared the crap out of me the first yeah. time I went in there. You slam on the gas. It makes no noise, and your head goes back. Yeah, it's fast. It's like a roller coaster, it's literally. Nice, fantastic. But gosh. I want to see, what do you got? Okay, so, I know you have a humongous collection, and I feel like one of the things that you never really got into, or at least I haven't seen, is some of the older oh, stuff. Yes, I did! Some of the older stuff. Now, I brought some impressive stuff, and I brought some stuff to talk about where the market is, and so on and so forth, but really Do you quickly, want to move all this crap out of the way? Not really crap, I mean, no. in. Do I, do I have one of these on my desk? <laughs> no. Feel the weight of it. Oh my. Mike, I would like to thank the Academy <laughs> for bringing me out here to Los Angeles. It's been a long journey getting. <laughs> anyway, so I want to talk to you about some vintage stuff. Myself, I got into vintage white watches lately. Sorry, Roman, didn't mean to cut you off there. Unfortunately, this is a collaboration with producer Michael. So if you guys watching this want to see the vintage watches that Roman brought, head on over to producer Michael's channel now. In the meantime, enjoy the ending of our trip to LA. So guys, I got to tell you, uh, I had an absolute blast meeting with Michael. Uh, we ended up staying an extra 45 minutes to an hour just chit-chatting about various things that he's into. We found out we have a lot of the same interests, like travel and history and things of that nature. Uh, very down-to-earth guy, just as he comes off. Humble. Humble, very humble, just as he comes off on his YouTube channel. For all the haters out there that say terrible things about him, uh, take it all back, because he's really a nice and humble person. Michael, thank you once again. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sure I don't have this to tell you. This was fun for us. Yeah, I'm sure you, I don't have to tell you to subscribe to his channel. He's pushing like a million subscribers, but it was a lot of fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys soon.